Hey students, this is Mr. Bickford bringing you Chapter 6, Inquiry Lab on the Distributive Property. Uh, last lesson we learned about some other properties. In this lab we're going to talk about the distributive property and how you can model, build models with the distributive property. And also I'm going to teach you how to use algebra tiles, which a lot of kids uh, find useful for understanding uh, the distributive property. Uh, in your book, on page 481, is this example. So you don't have to copy this down unless you want to. Uh, you can go to page 481. And the situation that we're going to look at uh, and talk about the distributive model is this. Three friends go to a concert at a fair. Each person pays admission to the fair, $6, and admission to the concert, $22. Some of you may have attended a concert at a fair. So the reason you pay two different amounts is you might be going just to the fair and not going to the concert. So if you were doing that, you could pay just 6 bucks and do the fair, do the rides, and all that. If you wanted to go to the concert, that would be another $22. So three friends, they're going to a concert at a fair, so they have to pay $6 to get into the fair and $22 for the concert. So one way that we could build or model this problem is an area model. An area model with one rectangle. And here's what that model would look like. So let me explain this model. This three represents the three friends. This six represents the money they have to pay to get into the fair, and the 22, to 22 represents the $22 to get into the concert. So how would we find the area of this entire rectangle? Well, the way we would do that, area of one rectangle, the area of a rectangle is length times width. So here's one dimension, the three. Okay, three friends. So three times this other side of the rectangle. Length times width or length times width uh, 3 and then this side of the rectangle is 6 plus 22. It's both of those put together. So one way we could figure out or model this situation is this. 3 times 6 plus 22 where this is the pink side of the rectangle and 3 is this side of the rectangle, representing three friends. Well now we can solve that. We know how to do that using order of operations. 6 plus 22 makes 28. So to solve this it would look like this. 3 times 28 and then if we multiply 3 times 28 we get $84 would be the total for the friends to do that, go to the fair and the concert. Now, we could also, so this is one way we could model it. Using the distributive property, we could change this model into a separate model with two rectangles. Let me show you what that looks like. Area model with two rectangles. So that means
I'm separating one rectangle into two rectangles. This part is still a three. And this is a six from right here, and this is a twenty two. So now we've got two different rectangles. And we could still get the total from this model, uh, finding the area of two rectangles. So area of two rectangles would look like this. The area of this rectangle would be 3 times 6. Combined with the area of this rectangle plus 3 times 22. So let me highlight, go back and highlight where we got these numbers. The 22 was this, long side of that rectangle, and yellow. That's the 3. So in this expression, we would do the multiplying first before addition. So 3 times 6 would be 18 plus 3 times uh, 22 would be 66. When we combine 18 and 66 we still get the same total, $84. So moving from one rectangle to two rectangles is really an example of the distributive property. So this expression, 3 times 6 plus 22, can be rewritten using the distributive property into 3 times 6 plus 3 times 22. These two things are equivalent, and that is really an example of the distributive property. Um, okay, the last thing I want to talk about is modeling... Uh, the distributive property using variables. So here in this example we had all numbers but we could have changed the 6 into a variable. This could have been the letter X, the letter W. This could be a variable and that's what I'm going to model down here and I'm going to show you how to use algebra tiles uh, and we'll be using these in class as well. So model Three times x plus two using using algebra tiles. So really, what I what I've done here is this is not a number anymore. Okay. Up here, we had all numbers, and in this example right here, we've got a variable. Instead of a number right here, I've changed that to a variable. And you can use algebra tiles to model this. Okay, So when you're using algebra tiles, the rectangle tiles R represent an X. The rectangle tiles represent X or your variable. And as we practice with this, it will make more sense. The small square tiles, those represent a single one, the number one. So the long The long rectangles represent a variable. The small square tiles represent the, a number one, a single digit. So these are an X. These represent a one. 
another thing that I often talk about, um, these are like fries, they're long and skinny, and these are like chicken nuggets, they're more small. You can't put, you can't combine fries and chicken nuggets. If you're counting fries, you can count fries together, but you can't mix these two things together. So let's look at this model right here, three times x plus two. And again, those are x's and those are a one. So let's model three times x plus two. I'm starting with my parentheses and let me tip this. So I want to model x plus 2. So how do I build that using my algebra tiles? Well, the x is a fry. And then I've got two nuggets. So my model would look like this. Whoops, I made accidentally three. That's not there, my mistake. So this right here is x plus two. But I've got three times that x plus two. So I need this, x plus two, or fry plus two nuggets, and I need that three times. So my model, I would need to do this. I need another one here, another one here, And then two nuggets with that fry, two nuggets with that fry, and the same thing. So if I was using algebra tiles to create three times x plus two, it would look like this. Here is a model for three times x plus two using algebra tiles. Again, this one's not here. It's my mistake. x plus 2 times 3. Here it is. Built it with algebra tiles. So another, another thing I could do is I could now rearrange. I could put all the fries together and all the chicken nuggets together, and I could change this expression into an equivalent expression. And that is another, that is the same thing we did here, just a different way of looking at it. But both of these, this moving to this, this expression moving to this expression is the distributive property. And this expression moving to this expression that we're going to complete over here is also the distributive property. So now let's rearrange this on this side. Here's 3 times x plus 2, x plus 2 times 3. And over here, we're going to put all the fries together and all the nuggets together. So here's what that would look like. Got three fries. And... Three fries and six nuggets. Now I can create a new expression that's equivalent to this, but I all nothing changed. You can see three fries, six nuggets. I just all I did on this side was put the fries together and put the nuggets together. So this expression over here would be three x's or three fries plus six, six nuggets. This right here is an example of the distributive property. So a lot of times kids struggle with the distributive property. If you're struggling uh, creating the different expressions, definitely grab tiles in class and you should be building using tiles. Build this, how many times do you need to build it? 
and then rearrange everything into all fries, all tiles, and that is your new expression. All right, that does it for uh, Inquiry Lab on distributive property, and uh, I'll see you soon for, I think it's uh, lesson six or seven next, I'm not sure. Okay, that's all for now. See you soon.